Daily came misery and suffering. The ever-growing list of killed and wounded kept our hearts filled with dread that the next list would have the name of someone we dearly loved. The ever-arriving wounded drained our hearts and our small supply of food. The Yankees, finding they could not destroy the spirit of Virginia, were starving us into submission. Susan Blackford. When civil war erupted in 1861, most thought it would end quickly. A single battle would settle the dispute. One politician even boasted that the blood spilled in this war would not fill a thimble. For three and a half years, the war dragged on with no end in sight. 1864 was a year of bold strategies and desperate measures. In May, Grant attacked Lee at Spotsylvania, Cold Harbor, and the Wilderness. In 30 days of nonstop fighting, the Army of the Potomac loses 50,000 men. At Cold Harbor, their loss is 7,000 in only 20 minutes. Northern newspapers called Grant a butcher. Many advocated peace with the South under any terms. That summer, a ruthless Union general and his army of blue slashed through the Shenandoah Valley. He introduced Virginians to a terror and destruction they'd never seen before. The general was David Hunter, and his target was Lynchburg. The Civil War was in its fourth year. In the North, support for the war reached its lowest point. Abraham Lincoln's chances for re-election that November were fading. Support for his opponent, George B. McClellan, was growing. Many in the North hoped he would win the election and negotiate peace with the South. Things are worse in Dixie. The northern blockade was tightening and the home front struggling. Food and medicine were becoming scarce. Starvation was becoming the order of the day. The Confederate Army was increasingly outnumbered. Despite unthinkable bloodshed, the worst was still to come. That spring, President Lincoln put his faith in a rumpled man from the Midwest a general who'd won crucial victories at Vicksburg, Donelson, and Chattanooga. Ulysses S. Grant was the kind of commander Lincoln needed. Grant was put in charge of all Union armies. Under his orders was a military machine of half a million soldiers. Grant developed a grand strategy to drive the South into submission and end the war. His armies would simultaneously attack targets throughout the South. His offensive would be relentless and bloody. He could replace lost men and supplies, while the South could not. His largest force, 110,000 soldiers, would strike Lee's Army of Northern Virginia and destroy it. Then Grant would take the biggest prize of the war, the Confederate capital. On to Richmond became the northern battle cry. 
The second part of Grant's plan was to strike the heart of the Confederacy and cut the South in two. He ordered General William Tecumseh Sherman and his 60,000 Federals to march into Georgia to capture Atlanta and then crush Confederate resistance in the Deep South. A similar mission was given to General David Hunter and the Army of West Virginia. He was to devastate the Shenandoah Valley, the breadbasket of the Confederacy, then march on to Lynchburg and seize the city. Hunter's army was 18,000 strong. Its commander, a radical abolitionist with a fiery temper. He was one of the first Northern generals to make war on Southern civilians. Hunter's record caused the South to declare him an outlaw, and if captured, to be executed. <laughs> 